Okay, so let's take a look at question number two, which is another optimization problem. This is in, uh, this is still lesson three. Um, and let's go through it and look at how we can pick out um, all the key ideas here. So we have a music festival that is ordering two sizes of advertisements, okay, signs and posters for an event. So right away, that should tell us something here that we are looking at two types of items. These are the items that we are going to be optimizing, okay, which which should tell us that we need to assign these to variables to optimize, okay? Um, the committee wants less than 40 signs and less than 70 advertisements in total. So this is also now telling us the restrictions on each of those items. Okay, so let's just jump into the question here. First one says, A, define the variables in this situation. Okay, so I would just let X equal the number of signs. All right, and then we will let Y equal the number of posters. Okay, and we're going to be optimizing the numbers of these at some point. Okay, the committee wants less than 40 signs and less than 70 um, in total. And the committee decide to get at least three times as many signs as posters. So that's an important piece of information here. That there is going to be um, the value of the signs or the number of signs is going to be three times as much as the number of posters. The signs cost $9.75 each and the posters cost $17.50 each. So that this is going to be part of our objective function here, those values. Okay, that's what we're gonna end up optimizing. So let's just keep going here. Um, determine the restrictions on the variables and explain your reasoning. So again, we are counting things. Okay, so counting things means that we have to have a physical value that we can actually count. Okay, so this means X and Y are just going to be elements of whole numbers. Okay, the lowest sign and, and poster count we can have is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay, we can't have negative numbers, so we could just define it as, as that. Okay, or we can define it as integers with the restriction that X and Y must be greater than zero, okay? But whole numbers is just a little bit easier to, to con and more concisely uh, easier to define. So we write a system of inequalities to represent each constraint, okay? So now we're looking at the quantity of signs, okay? So we have to go back to our question and the committee wants less than 40 signs. So that means X, okay, has to be less than or equal to 40. Okay, because we can't produce more than 40 signs. We could have 39, we could have zero, but it has to, it, the, the limit is 40. The total number of advertisements, okay, so that is the signs plus the posters. Um, and what are we told here? And less than 70 advertisements total. So in the question, the signs plus posters can't be greater than 70. Okay, so that means we would take both the number of signs plus the number of posters, okay, and we define that as being, have to being less than 70. So that's 69, 70, 68, cannot be 71, okay, so the limit here is less than or equal to 70. Okay, and we need one more equation that we have to kind of figure out. We have to determine the relationship between the signs and posters. Okay, so in the near the end of the question it says the committee decided to get three times as many signs as posters okay so we have to express that as an equation okay so how do we if we we have say we have signs so if i use like little dots here for signs okay and then squares for posters Okay, it's, it, we're, what we're having here is the committee decided to get at least three times as many signs. Okay, so if I had three posters, then that means I would have to have 12 signs, right? Um, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that means if we wanted these two to be equal in some kind of a way, we would have to say that we would need to multiply the number of posters Okay, by, um, by three, I think I got too many dots here. It just should be nine. Okay, so this, this is what we're looking at physically here. So if we write down two variables, X and Y, okay, how would we make 
how could we, if we had to understand how would these be equal, okay, we would have to multiply the number of signs, which is y, by 3 in order to make them equal to the number of posters, okay? And so that's essentially what our um, equation here, our statement is saying, we need to get at least three times as many signs as posters. Now, we don't have to have three times as many, but if we wanted them to be equal, we would have to multiply the number of signs by 3. But if it just says at least as many, that means it's x is less than or equal to um, three times the number of signs. Okay, or now that we have this one equation like this, we could, if we don't like having y um, by it, uh, not by itself, we can say that we can divide by three and we can say that one third of x is less than or equal to y. Okay, so those mean the same thing. Okay, this is just an easier way, easier way to express it. Okay, this is one of the, mo the harder ones that you have to kind of get to, th to think about because it, it kind of looks on the surface that you multiply by three for the signs but it's actually the number of the number of posters is what's smaller so we have to multiply by that number in order to make it equal to the number of signs okay by three but but it also says that it is at least as much which implies that it could be less than Okay, so that this is one of the ones that you might have to just think about that for a minute and convince yourself that you know that this is the right inequality that we're looking at. Okay, so then the next question here is we want to graph the system. Okay, so I would again, I would take these values, okay, and I would plot these using a computer tool just because it is easier for you to work with when you are starting out with these. So let's just go back to our um, Desmos tool here. Okay, I'm going to erase the pre any previous equations and we are gonna put in our constraints here. So I have X is less than 40. Okay, and then that's one of our constraints. Then we have X plus Y is less than or equal to 70. And then we have X is less than or equal to 3Y. Okay, so now what we want to do is I'm going to shrink the graph, going to pinch in, okay, and we need to figure out where um, all these areas are sort of overlapping here. So you can see the three areas, the three equations that draw out in this, um, in this equation here form a, an overlapping kind of <clears throat> boundary area here um, where we have a region that um, the, the, the entire area is defined by. So we have to look at the cases where, where they all overlap here. So in this question here, um, where is the region actually overlapping? Okay, so it's not this little triangle that you see here on the corner <clears throat> or off to the right because it doesn't contain the shaded area for x less than 40. Okay, so I'm just going to touch the point so you can see it. So one of the points here starts at 0, 0, 0. Okay, that's one of the coordinates. The next coordinate is actually right here. It's 40 and 13.3. Okay, is a decimal. Then it goes up to this next region, which is 40, 30. Okay, and then the next region where it, it intersects would be 0, 70. Okay, so these are the extreme limits of where everything is overlapping. And one of those combinations is going to give us um, our, our optimized objective function. Okay, so, so this is the, um, the, we're looking for the overlap and we found our coordinate points. Okay, and then now we can go back to our question and then look at this here. Okay, so if we go forward here, I'm just going to, let me erase a couple of things here that were from a previous question. Okay, and what, so instead of graphing it again, um, I would use here, I'm just going to mark in here, use Desmos um, to help with graphing. 
Okay, it's a lot easier to use and you you can find coordinates um, much more accurately, um, which is can be a problem for some students if you're trying to do it manually, especially if the numbers don't work out. And then it indicate on your graph the points that meets the constraints the committee is under but allows them to buy the most advertising. Okay, so there are four points, okay, and that's what we recorded um, in from the graph. First point is zero, zero. Second point is 40, 13, 13.3, but we wouldn't buy a third of a sign, so you could only get 13 signs. Um, so that's just a, a minor point that you have to remember that you're not buying a fraction of a sign. Then we have 40 and 30, okay, and then we have 0 and 70. Let's correct that here, 0 and 70. Okay. So those are, the, those are the points that we will end up testing in our objective function. Okay, now our objective function, remember, is our cost equation. Okay, so we know from the question that it costs $9.75 times the number of signs, which was represented by the letter X. And then we know that the posters were $17.50 times the number of posters, which is represented by the number Y. Okay, so then what we have to do is figure out here what is going to... Um, which the constraints the committee is under to buy them the most advertising. Okay, so we are looking for um, the most amount of advertising that we can get at essentially is going to be the cheapest price. Okay, so here's the way we need to look at this. Our cost equation, we need to plug in the values for each one of those points. So our first point is zero, zero. Okay, so what does that actually buy us? Well, it buys us nothing, okay, because we can't buy any posters and we can't buy any, anything um, for values signs. So it would cost us nothing, but it buys us nothing. So that's really not an, an answer that we want. Okay, the next equation here is we can buy um, 900, 975 times 40 plus 1750 times 13. Okay, we won't use 0.3 there. And if we work that out, we get about $617.50. Okay. But we still should check the other ones here. So that lets us buy 40 and 13. But what if we tried to buy um, 40 and 30? Because that was one of the values that we could find on our equation too. So... We know at this case, this is going to be greater than 617, just because we have a bigger amount there. So if we work out the exact answer, it is going to be times 30, it is going to be $915, okay? So that cost is getting quite large, okay? And then we could check for good measure the last one, okay? So the last one, we're allowed to buy zero, and then we are buying seven, um, posters, but we're buying 70 of them. Okay, so 17.50 times 70 is going to equal to 12.25. Okay, so if you're a business, what are you going to do so that you can buy advertising, okay, and have the most amount of advertising at the lowest price, okay? So in this case here, we are getting um, this choice right here, okay? We will only have to pay $617, but we can get... 40, po uh, 40 signs and 13 posters, okay, 53 items, um, which, would, which would give us our um, uh, most inexpensive amount, but yet let us buy um, the, uh, a certain amount of advertising, the most advertising that we can get, okay? Um, just if we look back here, yeah, we were, our constraint was that we couldn't buy more than 70 posters, right? So... If we, this is going to buy us 653, the other ones will buy us 70, 40 signs and 30 signs and then zero signs and then seven, 70 posters. So, <clears throat> so the one that will, we're, even though we're not buying a total of 70 posters, this is still the, the best choice because it costs the least amount and we are within our constraints here. Okay, so this is how you work through a problem from start to finish um, with one of these. Um, you use, the graphing is kind of critical because you need to get accurate um, points that you need to find um, and overlap. Okay, and so it is worthwhile to use that tool. But this, is the, this will take you through the steps of what you need to, to figure out going from um, 
uh, defining your variables, defining the, um, the limits for those variables, defining the constraints around those variables, and then plotting, the vari plotting those equations, figuring out where they overlap, and then f plugging those values into an objective function.